there, guys. Welcome back. That was perfect. Hey there, guys. Welcome back. This is going to be part four of the sunken greenhouse project. And today I'm going to try to give you an update on some of the things that I've accomplished since part three. Uh, part three was obviously when the structure went up and it kind of started looking like a greenhouse. Um, but since then, I've been working on some heavy lifting projects and that's namely been these steps or this stairway and a retaining wall system on the inside. So I'm gonna grab the camera and show you kind of how I did those. And then after that, I'll grab the camera again and talk to you a little bit more detail about uh, different features of those projects and then maybe some of the things that I have coming up. The first thing I wanted to accomplish in this portion of the project was to get some stairs into the greenhouse. And I did this by building some retaining walls and then forming up some steps with cinder blocks, two by eights, and some cedar wood fence boards. The fence boards were essentially there just to act as forms to hold in the concrete while it cured. After that, I added in some concrete remesh and got ready to pour the concrete. After the steps were poured, I let them cure for a couple of days and then took off the forms and prepared for the largest portion of this project, and that was going to be building the interior retaining walls. The system I used is known as a Sutter Wall. It's comprised of a series of H-posts and anchoring hardware that combine to form a metal framework that eventually holds inserted 2-inch dimensional lumber to finish out the retaining wall. Each section of the system includes 1-inch diameter rebar, a 2-inch thick H-post, and then an anchoring system that consists of a duck-billed galvanized anchor and a threaded rod that eventually ties that anchor into the H-post. And then after it's filled with dimensional lumber, it is capped off with a metal cap. Now the first step in installing this system is to anchor all of your 1 inch diameter rebar into the ground where your H-posts will eventually go. Now in most areas of the world, this would be probably a very easy task, and that's actually one of the advantages of this Sutter Wall is it's generally very quick to install. But if you can see by the surroundings, I am installing this in dang near pure rock, so it was a bit of a slower process. After all my rebar was set in the ground, I then added my H posts and prepared to dry them in the ground as well using a special attachment that's specifically designed to fit these H posts. And here's what it looks like. After my H posts were driven into the ground, I then backfilled with a little bit of gravel to help stiffen up the connection between the rebar and the H post until I could get my anchors in. And here's how it goes together. The threaded rod goes through the hole in the H post and then the duckbilled anchor simply just threads around it. And normally the next step would be to simply just jackhammer that anchor into the ground behind your wall, but because I'm working with almost pure rock, I had to call my father-in-law to help bail me out on this one. He brought a rock drill and a 90-pound jackhammer to get this project done, and I'll tell you what, it was not easy. And once we had our pilot hole drilled, it was now time to use the jackhammer to actually set the anchor. Uh, the hammer we're using is a 90 pound jackhammer and that bar that my father-in-law is inserting into the anchor is probably about 25 to 30 pounds. So I tell you what, it was not an easy process. Now once all the posts and anchors were set in place, the real beauty of the system came into play. And that's in the simplicity of using these H posts. You can use virtually any dimensional lumber in which to fill in the areas between the posts to create your retaining wall. But in my case, I'm just using scrap wood and things that I had on hand, and I'm really liking the way the wall's turning out.
Okay, so you just saw a little compilation of clips on how I installed the retaining wall inside and how I formed up and poured these concrete steps. But you didn't see any detail on how I did this retaining wall and I just hadn't, I didn't film it at the time. Uh, but let me just tell you basically how I did it. I got these heavy timbers from my neighbor Dave. He had them lying around and didn't have any use for them. So I figured I'd put them to good use. Uh, these top ones are not treated at all. Uh, these bottom ones are pressure treated and essentially what I did is once I had the steps cut out and formed up with the concrete blocks and compacted, um, I had rebar also uh, in those concrete blocks just to keep it, anything from shifting. But once I had that in place, I cut out the bank a little bit and then I started laying these timbers in horizontally and tying them down with rebar through each timber into the ground below. Once it got to this larger level, I put this piece of uh, scrap angle iron in with some concrete anchors and basically on this side, on this column, all these timbers are held by this strip of angle iron and I also have one on this side. And then on the other side, they are held in and retained by the steps themselves. So let me grab the camera and I'll kind of show you how that is. Okay guys, welcome to the inside of the greenhouse. This is the finished retaining wall. Um, if I didn't mention it before, it is a Sutter retaining wall from Sutter Equipment in Nevada. And one of the reasons I chose this retaining wall is because it takes up so little space uh, by using these H posts and these caps and the anchors that you saw me put in with that rock drill and jackhammer. Uh, but one of the really cool things, other than not taking up any space really, is the fact that you can use whatever wood you have on hand to fill into the majority of the retaining wall. In this case, I've used a combination of pallet wood and some other scrap wood from my neighbor Dave, who was nice enough to give it to me. Um, on top here, I have pea gravel. Um, and those of you who are familiar with uh, landscaping and retaining walls and different things like that, that is not what I backfilled the wall with. Uh, if you notice that last little clip, I put some three quarter inch uh, crushed stone in there. And then I just use this pea gravel to top it off to have a nice little area to sit on like this, or maybe lay on if I get put in the doghouse. Um, but this will probably be my primary area for planting, um, as well as this side. This one's about a little, little higher than waist height. And then, uh, you know, this one's just great for sitting or planting or anything like that. So let me tell you about some of the other things that I've done, uh, which have namely been this uh, support pole right here. I know many of you said this would be totally fine to support it, and I agree. I had lots of people who, with a lot of experience tell me that, um, but this was just something that I had in my mind and I kind of wanted to do, and I didn't think it caused that much of an inconvenience. Uh, one other advantage to having this support pole here, in my opinion, or at least in my thinking, is that uh, it helps this roof to be anchored down in the middle. If we ever did have a huge windstorm and it caused somewhat of an airfoil over the roof and it caused uh, the roof to start to uh, lurch or, or uh, flex, this would just act as another anchoring support. That's about a 120 pound uh, concrete block, maybe 140 pounds. Uh, so it's just one extra thing to help tie into it. And I plan on using this to maybe hang plants off of or different things like that. One of the other things I did was to install just a passive air vent. And I did that right up there. And I'll show you what it looks like from the outside. So uh, that's just a standard gable vent. Uh, just basically the same exact vent I put on my chicken coop and my in-laws chicken coop and it's basically just going to uh, allow a little bit of passive airflow um, other than what flows through that little window down there at the end as well as this door. Okay, so that's pretty much it for part four. Uh, let me just give you a quick rundown of what I have planned for part five and then I will talk about maybe some of the other things I have coming up after that. Uh, so in part five, I'm planning on installing more ventilation. I'm going to install a solar um, attic fan in here to pro provide a little more, um, uh, you know, airflow. And then uh, I'm going to install some sort of wind diversion. So something like a flap or something that comes out. 
at my window down at there, uh, down there at the end, so that on our our days when we have a nice breeze, that I can have the wind uh, act as some of the uh, ventilation in here. Uh, I'm going to install a door latch on the door, and then I will do all the final landscaping and remove the rest of that large pile that you may have seen um, that's sitting still right next to the greenhouse. Um, after that, some of the other uh, projects, I will probably be doing a shelving system or something to where I can have little shelves that come out that I can, you know, grow plants or flats of plants on um, and maybe something else <laughs> like that. Maybe something, little hangers that go on the side of one of the walls. Um, I will probably be doing that cooling tunnel, uh, the trenching of that, but that's going to be probably after the summer's over because I can't do any more digging right now. Um, and then I want to do like an interior water tank or something that I tie into a rainwater harvesting system. Um, but like I said, that's going to be kind of after this series is probably done. So anyway, guys, I hope that was helpful and maybe gave you some ideas of some projects that you may have uh, regarding greenhouses or gardening. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.